Okay, so hello everyone. Welcome to this study, uh, uh, online study fair for the Philippines. So we will begin this online session. So Dino Sensei, could you proceed session? Okay. okay, so good afternoon, everybody. So as I'm not sure who are the attendees, I would like to invite you, distinguished guests, dear teachers, dear parents, fellow students, and friends. Uh, welcome to the study at Osaka University Online Fair today. Uh, first, uh, I would like to set some rules of engagement. Uh, first is uh, please mute your mic, that is one. And then next is, uh, if you have any questions, uh, please enter them in the chat. And then I will, uh, after the, during the question and answer session, uh, we will try to answer all of the questions that you put in the chat. So without further ado, so I would like to start. And this is for uh, the prospective international students. Uh, just a brief introduction. So what do you know about Osaka? Uh, just an introduction about Osaka. If you look at the map, you will see, so okay, this is the map of Japan. And you will see that more or less Osaka is situated uh, almost at the center. Uh, and it's uh, bounded by Hiroshima, Kyoto, uh, Nara, and so on. So some cultural uh, nice place to visit. And like Manila, for example, it's uh, very near the sea, so on. So, and something you may not know about is, uh, let's say, it's Universal Studio Japan is in Osaka, of course, in Os located in Osaka. And you see here some cup noodle means that it's a nice place if you enjoy eating. There are reasonable and delicious foods also. And also, uh, you have the, the Osaka University is also uh, situated very near uh, the airport and it's uh, connected by this monorail. Another thing that you may not know is it's Osaka is the second most livable city in the world. Uh, here I show just the data. This is the global livability uh, data. Uh, listed is 10 and number two is Osaka here. Uh, the first is uh, Auckland in New Zealand. So how the data looks. So it ranks number two. In terms of stability, it gets 100%. Very stable city to live. Healthcare is also 100%. Culture is 83. And so 83 points, education and so on. Uh, so it's a nice place to stay safe. So about some facts about Osaka University. Uh, Osaka University, the history can be traced to merchants, merchants that wanted to study virtue, ethics, and so on, how to deal with business, etc. And then it was later uh, followed by Tekijuku, which is who then they tried to study science through by reading Dutch uh, textbooks and so on. So you will see that originally Osaka University started with the School of Science and School of Medicine, which you will saw it's very strong in science and medicine as a foundation. And then of course it branched out to engineering, law, etc. And now you also, it has a comprehensive program in foreign studies. So we can say, or I can say that let's say Osaka University in terms of uh, the number of students, it has the most number of students in the whole of Japan because of this uh, merging of the two universities. And it's designated as National University Corporation means it has uh, some special uh, funding that it gets from the Japanese government too. And it has three campus. And so, which are situated at the northern, more uh, safe place in uh, part northern part of Osaka Prefecture. Uh, in terms of the number of uh, schools, it has eleven undergrad schools, 
Ah, so you see here, you can look at the numbers, but I would like to emphasize that they put more emphasis on research as can be seen by the number of graduate schools and research institutes. Uh, of course, with the two university hospitals. And then this is just uh, the rundown of what the usual thing, uh, the, the usual uh, topic, I mean, fields that are, uh, you can find in Osaka University. And like I said earlier, they're, it's very famous for medicine. So these are especially in immunology. So people say, for example, if, if especially in, uh, how do you say, uh, tropical diseases and so on, it's uh, very famous. And also they put emphasis on robotics, like the ones you see here. And another is uh, joint research laboratories. So Osaka University emphasizes research with industry. So immediately from uh, fundamental research to real life applications. And in order to do that, they establish some joint laboratories with uh, the industry. So it's actually, we say industry on campus. So some of the companies, they put some research uh, facilities inside the university and do research together with the students in Osaka University. And of course, there are some overseas centers and networks uh, around the world. Uh, so some kind of office of Osaka University, but the one that would be relevant for you is the one located at De La Salle University. So we also have here, if I zoom in, if there is an Osaka University uh, satellite office at De La Salle University. Uh, which you can visit and uh, see also and consult with uh, the, some of the people who are uh, uh, stationed there. Uh, here are some of the professors visiting that place and entertaining the discussion with others. And yes, so in terms of networking, there are, let's say, for example, inter-faculty agreement 652, and 12 of them are with the Philippines. And here's just a list of them. And inter-university, there are 140, and three of them are with the Philippines. So you may see some of the uh, universities that have uh, agreements, exchange agreements with Osaka University. And these are just the statistics for the inbound, outbound uh, students. So, studying at Osaka University, the academic calendar. Uh, so spring term is from April to June. Summer is from June to September. Fall is from October to December. Winter, December to March. And graduation is usually September or March. So usually classes, you can start either April or October. So during the spring term or during the fall term or autumn term. And the opportunities to study uh, in, so of course, all the programs, you can study them in uh, Japanese, but there are some special programs that you can take all in English. So no requirement for any Japanese proficiency. Uh, from start to finish, you can uh, study them. Uh, you can take them in, uh, in English. And I think somebody, uh, there will be uh, this uh, presentation about this earlier also, uh, later. So this is some opportunities for studying English. And the general form for graduate admission is uh, uh, listed here. So, but the most important part here is to identify a potential supervisor. After you have done this, I think the rest will be supported by the uh, group the, your potential supervisor. So the important thing here, uh, we list many things, but the important thing you can remember here is to identify the supervisor, which you, uh, we can discuss more later if you are interested. 
other opportunities are, of course, you can do double degree and short term exchange program. Double degree for the Philippines, for example, we have a master program together with the La Salle or together with the Philippine, uh, Philippine Normal University. Uh, so what is this? So you can you can get double degree, one degree from the Philippines, and one degree from the from Osaka University. Uh, if you're interested, you can also, for example, convince your uh, supervisor or advisor now in the Philippines to negotiate another or new programs like this that we can do together. For exchange, you have Frontier Lab, Maple, etc. So the Frontier Lab is mainly uh, focus on research, just doing research in science, engineering science, and in information technology. The others, you have to take classes, Maple, OSEP, and so on. It's just, uh, in some sense, like exposure program. You join the class as an auditor with the other students, uh, either in Japanese, uh, whether the class is given in Japanese or English, and then you take some credits. Uh, for graduate students so on, I think, or for exposure, it, I re would recommend if you are interested in research, just research Frontier Lab uh, is one option for you. And for examination, if you are an undergraduate student and you especially privately funded means you don't get a scholarship from the Japanese government. But of course you can get, this is what we define as privately funded. It's not that you don't get funding from the Japanese government. But of course, you can get funding from some uh, corporations so on. We still consider it as, as privately funded undergraduate student. Uh, you have the application is around July, and then this is just the flow. Anyway, you can look at this up also uh, in the web page. But uh, for undergraduate, it's necessary. So somebody asked, you need to have a Japanese language proficiency test at least level N1 or N2, if you are going to join an ordinary program. That is, it's not specially tailored for only English language program. Uh, not English language, a program that, is, that you can take just using English. So this is just uh, for ordinary uh, uh, degree programs, undergraduate. So other resources, uh, for example, so this is the finance. What usually you need? Enrollment fee is around uh, 282,000 yen. So just divide approximately by two to get to convert to Philippine peso. Tuition fee is around 500,000 yen. The half of the tuition fee and so on can be deferred depending on uh, the financial situation of the student. So you can get some exception full or half. And also there are opportunities for scholarship. So 40% of the international students usually receive this kind of scholarship, uh, this amount. So the most, uh, uh, mo the best maybe would be from the Japanese government. And then you can also get from uh, private uh, corporations. And there are facilities for dormitories and so on, also provided for the students. And uh, there are student centers to support, to support the international students. You can consult with some uh, uh, counselors and so on. And also there will be training uh, for some job uh, for you to how to uh, do interviews, let's say, and how to get job, so some kind of career uh, support. And then, yes, and then, yes, so see, this is from some other programs that are uh, available. But anyway, uh, if you are interested, more all of these are actually, you can find, if you Google Osaka-UACGPEN, then you get almost all of the information I just showed you are available in the web. And then again, I repeat, if you are interested, 
it would be nice if you could identify some potential uh, supervisor. And then the rest would be supported by the, the group, uh, the, 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 that potential supervisors group. So with that, thank you very much for your attention. I finish the introduction here. So now I will pass the ball to Jessil, who will moderate for the uh, my other colleagues in Osaka University. Thank you. Okay, so um, thank you very much, Dina Sensei, for uh, that introduction for Osaka University. Um, now we will be proceeding to uh, the maybe the presentations of some of the students and alumni of Osaka University. So we will be starting with um, Ariana. So Ariana is a bachelor student here in Osaka University. So those who are listening right now who are high school students or maybe people who have um, siblings that uh, wanted to enter Osaka University as a bachelor student, maybe you can uh, learn from our first presenter. So um, Ariana, can you start your presentation? Okay. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Uh, can you do a presentation mode, Ariana? Can okay. you guys see it? Yeah. Okay. See it okay. Thank you. Okay, good afternoon. I will be sharing my experiences as an undergraduate student in Japan. Hopefully, through this brief presentation, I can share a glimpse of what life is like studying in Osaka University. So my name is Ariana Santos, and to give a brief introduction, I will share my educational background first. So in April 2017, I graduated from junior high school in Sambeta College, Alabama. And on 2019, I graduated senior high school in Parafutter School. And in October 2019, I went to Japan and started my bachelor's degree program in Osaka University under the G30 Human Sciences International Undergraduate Degree Program as a MEX scholar. And currently, I'm a third year, so hopefully I can finish the program by 2023. So to give more information on the program, the Human Sciences International Undergraduate Degree Program sets out to cultivate self-motivated, reflective students who have a sophisticated knowledge base and like to help give necessary practical skills to meet the challenges that they will face in the fast-changing globalized world. So the program aims to give students a well-defined area of disciplinary expertise that can be applied to a variety of settings to bring workable solutions to a variety of problems and issues. So this program gives us the opportunity to focus and build expertise on one of the three areas of concentration which they provide, such as first, political and global studies, second, diversity and inclusion, and third, on Japan studies. So even though you would graduate in this program with a human science diploma, you still have the opportunity to focus on a certain area that you're interested in. For instance, I am interested in international relations, so I can take, I, I'm taking the political and global studies so I can learn more about it. Osaka University also welcomes applications from suitably qualified international students and domestic students with an international education background. So the documents that they would be requiring include secondary school transcripts and certificates, um, a copy of a standardized academic test such as the SAT or a language proficiency test certification such as the TOEFL since it's an English undergraduate program taught completely in English, two recommendation letters, etc. You can find a whole checklist and more like explanation and details regarding the requirements and application guideline. I have a link here on the PowerPoint to the application guideline, so I highly recommend you look at that. And the program period lasts for four years. So in, um, um, students who want to go to Osaka University, they would probably start at October 1, 2000, uh, 2022, and they would end 
at around September 30, 2026. However, uh, the program also gives the students the opportunity to graduate early by completing the program in three and a half years. So now I will be giving a, a brief explanation of the application timeline. So I found out about this program by searching different international relations or well, like human sciences degrees in Japan. And I stumbled upon the website and the application guideline document and I highly recommend you look at that document because that sole document was what helped me in preparing and sending all the documents to enter the program. So on December 1, the application period opens. And on January 7, the deadline for the online registration and the application fee payment is due. And by, by January 14, you would also have to send your, your, your requirements to post not only online, and they have to be they have to arrive at Osaka University by January 14. And by February 18, they may interview you to learn more about you and like to see if you're fit for the program. And they'll send you an email if you if you if they do think you're 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 fit for the program. And by late March, they'll notify you the screening result, whether it was successful or you have a conditional offer. And by May 6, there's a, that's a deadline to respond to their offers through email. And then late September, that's usually when students arrive in Japan and move into the dorm or the accommodation you go to and the entrance ceremony. And October 1, that's when the classes begin. So here you can see a picture of me by the Human Sciences Building in Suita Campus that was taken on my first day of school. And here is me in the entrance ceremony 2019 pre-COVID. And here's a picture of me with my fellow cohort mates with Dr. Wani, the mascot of Osaka University. So Osaka University also offers various scholarship opportunities. So you can find all of these in the application guideline and on the website, but they also offer the Osaka University scholarship where they give, they give these to students with outstanding grades and they're given a monthly stipend of 80,000 yen. And there are also financial aid offered by private organizations, which was mentioned earlier in the previous presentation. So you can contact the office more from the website if you want more information about this. And based on my own personal experience, I, I was given the MEC scholarship to university recommendations. So I was recommended by the university and the requirements, I guess, to be re recommended by the university and to get the MEC scholarship is to be a for undergraduate degree is to be a student age between the age ages of 70 to 22 and to have completed 12 years of school education and to fulfill the qualifications that they deem suitable for enrollment in a Japanese university. I, I receive a monthly stipend of 117,000 yen, which, which I can say is enough to live, like to, to, to live in Japan for a living fee, such as rent, for food, basically everything you need that can support it. And other opportunities that the program holds other than, other than the degree program is um, the opportunity to hone different skills, such as leadership skills. For instance, I joined the G30 HUS student council and through this, and through this um, council, I was able to bond more with other cohort mates from different years and with Japanese students and with, with um, professors as well, we were able to hold different events such as freshman mentorship orientation to help other students and online house hunting information session, especially during COVID-19. COVID so it really helps you um, hone different skills. I also joined a, a, a Japanese circle called OICU where international students and Japanese students um, basically meet with each other and bond. So we learn about different cultures. So through Osaka University, you get to meet other students outside your program and you get to learn more about Japanese culture as well. As you can see here, we, we, can, we go to different places and eat good food. And one more opportunity is again, going into circles or clubs. 
I joined the Japanese dance circle and here they were all Japanese students. So through this opportunity, I was also able to develop my Japanese language skills and also make uh, befriend regular Japanese Osaka University students. So Osaka University under the Human Sciences undergraduate degree program, not only helps in developing a knowledge base and like gives you the practical skills uh, to face the uh, changing globalized world, but it also helps in giving in giving you a broader perspective of society. I believe that through this undergraduate degree program, I was able to um, learn more about the world and people with different cultures that I otherwise probably wouldn't have if I didn't join them. Thank, thank you. Okay, thank you very much, um, Ariana, for that wonderful presentation. So the next presenters, uh, so the next two presenters would be uh, PhD students. The first presenter would be a fresh PhD student. She just graduated master's this recent uh, September graduation. And then the other PhD student would be, um, I think about to graduate, uh, maybe near, near graduation. So let me call on Nina Arellano, a first year PhD student, to um, explain to you the life of a PhD student. And maybe when she was in master, she can also share her experiences. Nina? Okay. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. So yes, I'm Nina Arellano. I'm a first year PhD student. Uh, but before I became a PhD student, I also went through uh, an exchange program in Osaka University and master's program. So I'm going to be sharing all that now. And I hope you'll find this helpful. Uh, but before I start, uh, I'm going to give a brief background about myself. So I got my bachelor's degree in materials engineering in UP Diliman last June 2017. And no, I'm not allowed there. I'm an average uh, student and with a fair share of bug sucks. So what I'm saying is like, if you're an average student and you think you don't have chances uh, in graduate programs, uh, I, I don't believe so. Uh, I think if you work hard, you can also make it. Um, so after uh, graduating, uh, I worked uh, right away in a manufacturing company in my hometown in Calamba in Dyson Electronics as a graduate engineer, engineer and later as a quality assurance engineer. And I didn't really thought of like going to a graduate program back then. But after some months of working, I felt that my job in the manufacturing was not very technical. So I wanted to explore what I really want to do in life. So I enrolled in a part-time master's in UP while working. And while doing so, I saw this poster for the QEDC short-term exchange program. So here QEDC stands for Quantum Engineering Design Course. Uh, it's for students, uh, graduate students around the field of like chemistry, physics, and engineering. So it's a one year short term program and we also had like some stipend back then in by from JASO from the Japanese government. And so I wasn't really sure if they will accept me back then in the exchange program, but uh, apparently the only requirement one of the requirements major requirement is that you're enrolled in a graduate program in uh, university with association with Osaka University and apparently I was taking a part time masters. So I, I applied and gave it a shot and voila, I got in. So after some thinking, I resigned from my job and flew to Japan to participate in the short-term program. And then while I was enjoying my short-term program here, I saw this opportunity for a master's PhD program here in Osaka University with MEC scholarship and I wanted to apply. So I consulted with my advisor back in the Philippines if it's possible for me to apply and if it's okay. And he said, um, yeah, if makapasok ka, then go. Um, basta like in the future, don't forget to give back to the Philippines. So yeah, so I'm right now. So, and then I applied here. Um, so from October, 2019, I started my master's in Osaka University as a Max Jaika scholar, also in the QEDC program. 
and I graduated. And actually this month, I just started my PhD as a Mex scholar. So what I'm gonna share here is how I got into the master's PhD program along with the Mex scholarship. Um, but I just want to clarify that uh, even if you don't get the Mex scholarship, you can still apply for the master's PhD program for the graduate program. Um, actually, there's a lot of people who does that here. And if you're worried about the financial situation or whatsoever, um, I think what most people who doesn't have a uh, scholarship in the beginning do is one, well, some people, they get support from parents or family. Some people uh, get a part-time job here, which uh, if, you're, if you have a student visa, you're allowed if you apply for a permit. And some people, um, because some professors uh, hire student research assistants. And so from that, some students can also get some financial support. And then there are, as Dino said, uh, Professor Dino uh, shared a while ago, there's also scholarships here, private scholarships from corporations and yeah, offered here that you can apply once you're enrolled in Osaka University. So uh, what I want to say is that like, even if you didn't get the scholarship, if you really want to get in here, like there's still other options. So, but what I'm gonna be sharing now is about um, my program with the MEX scholarship. So, um, okay. Uh, so let's go to the MEX scholarship. So I applied for the university recommendation program of MEX. So basically there's two ways to get a MEX scholarship. So first one is through the embassy of Japan in the Philippines. Um, I think the application for that is around March or April. I can share some link later about it. I, I'll just, all the links that I will share today, I'll just comment it uh, later in the comment after my presentation. So there's that. And second one is through university recommendation, which I got. So, um, so to find out if a program in Osaka University has a slot for, uh, University recommendation, you can check uh, the website of that program. Wait. You can check the website of that program or of the graduate school. So actually here, what I have, this first screenshot here is the uh, website for the graduate school of engineering science. And here you can see like what programs they have. So they, this is a page for international students, I think. So these are mostly English-based programs. So nakat pero sa ilalim nan like yung mga program. And then this is also from the Graduate School of Engineering. So a lot of different programs in bio, chem, and this is what I have like quantum engineering design course. And then there's also urban engineering and so on. And you can, I think from this like PDFs, you can check like how many slots they have for. Max University recommendation and what are the requirements? You can also check there. So I'll be sharing the link for this below. So yeah, um, the university recommendation, the application process is much like what Ari shared, Ariana shared. Uh, it's from November to January, I think, when you need to find out and apply. So mahirap ba yung application? Um, so shampre may ma requirements like uh recommendation letter documents uh i didn't uh, i didn't uh, apply for toefl because apparently you can submit uh what's this like proof that your your curriculum was studied was taught in english there's a document from that like just ask your your university um so yeah those kind of um documents and then for qdc um my my application process was more of an interview where I presented my past and present research works and the future plan for research. So yeah, this is mostly for the Max University recommendation um, application. Um, tips, if you're asking for tips, I'm not very sure that these are what really helps, but I think based on experience, this can help. So first, uh, establish a connection with a professor. I think uh, Professor Dino already shared this before uh, because it really helps if uh, you really 
you, you already have a professor when you apply. Um, so you can search. Dun sa, dito sa mga sites na to, meron naman din yung mga list of professors dun sa program. So I think you can search about them. And then um, you can also establish a connection with the professor. If you, for example, you went on an exchange program before, like I did an exchange program, right? For one year. But I think there's also some short like two weeks program that some students had, like for example, the Sakura program or the current program. So if you have that and you have a connection with a professor, uh, it's it's good. And also, um, if your professor in the Philippines has a collaboration with a professor here, that can also help. So in my case, when I applied for the short term program, I think that really helped for me because my professor had collaboration with my professor here now. And then I don't know if it helps, but when we fill up the application forms, they always ask like our Japanese proficiency. So if you took some JLPT, maybe, maybe I'm not sure it can help. And then um, if there's an interview, like in my case, uh, do well in presenting your research. Um, if there's an exam, I'd, some some application processes depends on the program also as an exam. So do well with it as well so my tip is really to explore like search about it and try if you really want to do it and yeah so that's it for uh, the application process that i did now my i'm going to discuss about my environment here so about my research and all so my research here is focused on plasma physics and most of what i do are simulations and some experiments um, what I can say about the research here is it's a bit more advanced. And there's also a chance that your professor is one of the prominent people in your field, which is awesome. And it gives you a lot of opportunities. Uh, so these are our, some of our laboratory members. Wait, where's my point? Okay. These are some of our laboratory members. So as you can see here, it's mostly Japanese, but there's also a lot of international students like uh, we're, we're Filipinos here, and then Indonesian, Yemen, Saudi Arabia, uh, Korean, French, and German. So, yeah, actually in Osaka University, it's I think it's one of the universities with most international students as well, which is really nice because you can learn a lot about different cultures. And aside from that, uh, you can also meet people through uh, collaboration. So here, these are some of the collaborations our laboratory have. This is taken during a lab hiking we do regularly in our lab. And uh, personally, in my research, I'm collaborating with experts from Taiwan, Hungary, and Germany. And actually, the photo here is when I had the opportunity to go to Budapest to do research. So I think uh, studying in Osaka University gives you a lot of opportunities to collaborate with people domestically and internationally. And the environment here. So Japan is so pretty. The nature here is so pretty. And I actually live in the city called Mino City. It's near the Suita campus of the Osaka University. And it's so pretty. Uh, personally, I really like this place. Uh, there's a lot of nature here. And it's so peaceful. Um, you can bike around here. And you'll feel like, you know, like Barbie. Kung paano siya magbike. And it's so peaceful. That's how I feel when I bike here. Um, and the people are also so kind. And this is like Osaka University. So there's also a lot of nature. So maraming places na And the nature, yeah, this is actually the Sakura during the spring season in Osaka University and it's so pretty. And then these are some of the places I went to recently and it's also so pretty. And if you're looking for community, uh, you can also find some here. So me, me, I personally found a community in a church because I'm a Christian. So this is like with my church mates when we went to Okinawa. And this is also, we also have a Filipino community here. So yeah. So that's all basically. Uh, if you have questions, maybe you can ask me later in the Q&A session. And I'm looking forward to having you guys here. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Nina, for that informative presentation. The next presenter would be Ms. Alastair Erfe, a doctoral student 
from the inter uh, a doctoral student of international public policy. So, um, Miss Alas, can you start your presentation? Okay, sorry, I'm muted. Anyway, hi everyone. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Naririnig po ba ako ng maayos? Can everyone hear me clearly? Oh, okay, yes. so hi. So um, this presentation will be kind of reversed. I will be first introducing what we are doing at Osaka School of International Public Policy. And then after that, I will be sharing my journey as an embassy recommended MEC scholar. So we actually have a very diverse school of scholars here, like some the first speaker is a G30, and then Nina is a university recommended. I am an embassy recommended, recommended scholar, and probably the next two speakers will also share their journey how they got the scholarship program. So um, I think Japan is very popular if you want to study sciences, but if you are interested in... Okay, sorry. Mm -hmm. So if you are interested in um, here, nakikita po ba yung slides ko? Uh, yes, we can see sorry. it. Okay. Yep, so, yep. If you're interested in, sorry, take two, politics, law, or economics, and some of the subjects that you listed here, international relations, democracy, and human rights, identity politics, peace building, and conflict resolution, global governance, multicultural coexistence, East Asian history, and then uh, media and politics, then Osaka School of International Public Policy is actually uh, something that you might want to check out. So, yeah. So, how do we study in Osaka? Um, Combine po yung classes namin. So, type 1 are subjects covering the fundamentals of law, politics, and economic subjects, linking this to the idea of international public good, which is at the core of, of what Osaka is. So, I, for example, I belong to the politics tracks. That that's why Medyo bias yung pernesent ko uh, courses above from the screen since um, wala akong alam sa econ. So yeah, hindi ko siya pernesent. Pero definitely, um, Osaka, School Osaka School of International Public Policy has a good program of economics. So and then type 2 are like highly specialized project-based seminars which are divided by topic. And this... Uh, we actually invite, I mean, also invite speakers from, um, from different organizations. Some are professors from schools, others are ambassadors, and others are working for um, international organizations. And it was really, um, I was really over, uh, overwhelmed that they were able to invite um, ambassadors or like representatives from the UN to give lectures in a classroom uh, type. And then type three are interdisciplinary classes that adopt multiple approaches different from conventional academia. So I think this is more about the empirical analysis and simulation analysis that they do in the economics class. And if you're interested uh, in the economics program, you can also apply in uh, OSIP. And then type four are particip participatory and practical classics, example, negotiation, debate, leadership, and internship subjects. So these subjects aid students to enhance communication skills and to acquire practical experiences. So uh, also the School of International Public Policy, if I remember, has recently partnered with IOM, the International Organization of Migration, to facilitate um, internship applications. And also um, in some of my classes, we are also uh, doing some debates and then leaderships, which is actually um, very helpful for those who want to pursue a track in foreign service or if you want to uh, work in international organizations in the future. So some programs here, I think, um, that is relevant to, to you guys. Uh, Dinyo Sensei or Prof. Dinyo al already mentioned about the partnership of um, the La Salle University and um, Osaka University. And one of the strong partnerships is actually with OSIP. So every year, there's a De La Salle University a double degree student here. So they're taking uh, one year here in OSIP and then one year in De La Salle University. And then, yeah, so they're, um, they're uh, 
they're publishing their work and they have supervisors who can actually guide them. And then this inter-university, so it's EUIJ uh, Kansai, it's somewhat like European studies, where some students can actually cross enroll to Kyoto University and Kobe University, and these courses can be credited in Osaka University. So yeah, it's a, it is a strength ng aking uh, graduate program. So of course, there's also the research center that facilitates and organizes um, um, seminars and talks such as um, the IO4. So through uh, these research centers, we were able to uh, yeah, invite experts from different fields uh, such as um, their comments on the Rohingya crisis or like the global climate change and then the US-China tensions or like the so-called uh, new Cold War in this century. So if you're interested in subjects like that, why not try uh, yeah, checking out the website of also, which is uh, I listed in here. So as for how I got in, okay, so um, this is my next journey. Uh, through embassy recommendation, I actually started as a research student, which I would call a privilege, and it's like one of the happiest <laughs> times of my year. So as a research student, I will be elaborating further in my next slides what I did during that phase. So for one year, I was a research student, and then master's program, and then doctoral program. Anong ginawa ko ng research student ako? So first of all, for six months, uh, I was accommodated in the Tsukumodai dorm and then I was just studying Japanese language for like everyday intensive. This is very helpful because you're not just going to study here in Japan. You have to look for apartments, you have to know how to to buy stuff or to do stuff on your own, especially kung uh, medyo introvert at ayaw mong humingi ng tulong. So wala kang choice kundi matuto ng uh, Japanese. So with the support of the CAEE, um, they conducted uh, intensive Japanese language course test for us. And also another two programs that I would really like to promote, a program of Osaka University is um, like the school visit program where you get to introduce your country's culture. So in this program, pumupunta kami sa several um, elementary and high schools where you present about Philippine culture and customs. So surprisingly, um, Surprisingly, sobrang nakikinig yung mga Japanese students and matatalino po talaga sila. And at the same time, nagpre-present din sila ng, uh, ng mga projects nila and ng research nila, tapos magpa-comment ka doon. So, very, uh, yeah, very interesting to know about uh, these programs. And then, um, the next one is my the host family program of Osaka University. Um, mind you, this is, was back in 2018. So, wala pang social distancing nun, kaya yung mga pictures ko, hindi pa kami ano, hindi pa kami layo-layo. So, um, yung host family program ng Osaka University is a very good program for you to learn what a Japanese family is like. So, they will invite you to their house, they will, um, you will travel together, they will teach you how to cook Japanese dish and um, anything about Japan. In fact, I feel like, um, nag-improve ang Japanese ko dahil sa aking host family. And up until now, we still meet and regularly. So, yep. And of course, friends from your Japanese language classes na hindi ko sila ka-major. They're not part of OSIP, but I'm still in touch with them. And um, yeah, it's uh, one of like uh, the things that I'm thankful for for Osaka University. Now, so experience at OSIP. Um, so I, again, I started as a research student for one year and then for one year, uh, what you're going to do in the research phase is also you're going to prepare for your admission to the graduate school. So habang research student ka, um, nagsusulat and nagkukonsult ka din sa supervisor mo. And, um, during nung phase na yon, ayun, prepare ko yung sarili ko for, um, for, um, revising my research proposal. At the same time, um, taking um, a language course like TOEFL, a language certificate course like TOEFL kasi kailangan siya sa OSIP. Although I'm not saying it's general, pero I think it's really good that um, you have a language certificate for other programs na pwede magamit sa, uh, sa ibang purposes. 
And then when I got accepted, most of the subjects that I showed, um, tinake ko siya during master's course ko. And then in March 2021, this year I just finished my master's and then I decided to continue my PhD uh, program since passion ko rin yung topic ko. And um, this is my experience because also is uh, yeah I I I was also able to meet fellows from the Washington uh Washington in the U.S. because uh, through also we have an exchange program that, that are inviting experts from around the world and also uh yeah diversity of students so I think this picture was we were celebrating uh Idil Fitir together with the others so um OSIP is um a very diverse place. I think 60% of our students are international students. And that's why most of our classes are also in English. So wag po kayong kabahan sa, sa, mga, sa, sa mga Japanese courses. So, yep. So thank you for listening. If you have questions, um, yeah, I think I will be passing the mic to back to Giselle. Thank you very much, Alas, for um, that uh, presentation. Um, for the next two percent, for the last two presenters, uh, the last two presenters, including me, are um, alumni of Osaka University. So let me start off with uh, Ms. Perez. Uh, she just graduated PhD from Osaka University and started working outside of Osaka University. So Crystal, uh, please start your presentation. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So thank you for attending this study fair. So okay. uh, just to introduce myself, I am Christelle, and I recently graduated from Osaka University. Uh, last September, I finished, uh, I got my degree in PhD in engineering, and I majored in advanced science and biotechnology. And just for background, uh, I came from UPLB, so my home university in the Philippines is UPLB, where I got my bachelor's degree in biology, and I major in ecology. So during my fourth year in undergraduate, I got to uh, do my thesis, or I got into ERI, the International Rice Research Institute, where I first got exposed to molecular uh, research. And after getting my bachelor's degree, I worked in the same university. So in the same, I joined the faculty of the Environmental Biology Division in the Institute of Biological Sciences. So at the same time, when I was working, I was also taking my master's in the same university, in the same institute. So I took up uh, MS Microbiology. But that time, I really want to go outside. I want to try to widen my experience. So I was looking for programs or scholarships in other countries, and then I uh, got into MEX. So I learned about the MEX program, the Japanese scholarship program. So I applied in Osaka University. And then I got my master's in engineering here in Osaka University, and still under the same major in advanced science and biotechnology. And then I continued, I pursued PhD under the same uh, graduate school of engineering and then as I mentioned I recently got my PhD in engineering majoring in biotechnology so since starting my studies here in Osaka University I've been studying about this zooplankton the Daphnia magna I use them as my model organism so why did I choose to uh, why did I choose to study here in Japan so we all know that Japan has an advanced site or uh, has an advanced science and technology, and they also have rich culture and the nature here is beautiful. You get to enjoy the four seasons and Japan is also just four hours away from home. And then why would you want to be here in Osaka? So Osaka for me, I think it has a good balance of the convenience of the urban side and also the peace of the rural side. So it's not as uh, crowded and busy as in Tokyo or secluded as other parts in other provinces and Osaka also is the food capital here in Japan and then uh, you can have fun here as Dinya Sensei mentioned earlier USJ is found here in Osaka and people here are more uh, friend like they are friendlier 
relatively. So why Osaka University? So in Osaka University, uh, there are different fields and they are front runners in research in, in their specific fields. And there are also several English programs that are uh, being offered here in Osaka University. And personally, so I graduated for under this program, the Biotechnology Global Human Resource Development Program. So these are, uh, there are many different fields under this program. So the goal of this program is to expose students to state-of-the-art research skills and facilities and for students to have in-depth knowledge in biotechnology. And there are several fields. So as I mentioned earlier, you, you could uh, study genetics, biochemistry, molecular biology, cellular engineering, protein technology, and biochemical engineering. I think there's other fields too. And the scope of this program, this is a, uh, we have masters, straight masters to PhD. It's a five-year course wherein you'll study master's for two years and then you will pursue PhD at least for three years. And you can either join uh, during spring semester, you'll start it in April, or the autumn semester if you start it on October. So this is just a like, summary of how I uh, pursue the application process. So like Nina, I got in this program through university recommendations. So the other way is uh, like alas through the embassy. So when you go through university recommendation, you start, usually you start during autumn admission. You, you come here on September, end of September, and then start on October. If you go through the embassy recommendation, usually they start on spring. So for the university recommendation, I submitted uh, the documents. The deadline is around December. Uh, so if you want to get uh, in October of the next year, you have to submit before, like the December, the previous year. And then you have to submit these documents. Uh, there's application form, statement of purpose. So in the statement of purpose, you have like a brief uh, summary of what you want to study here. So uh, just a little tip, like you can search in advance what are the laboratories here. Uh, because in the application form, you, all, you will also choose like your top three laboratories that you wish to join. So you can align your, your statement of purpose according to the research that is being done in that specific laboratory. So you can read through their studies or their published works, and then you can somehow align your research perspective on what they are doing so they can see what you can uh, contribute to their study. And then you can also have this uh, graduation certificate for your bachelor studies if you're applying for master's. And then this is what Nina mentioned, you can get a certificate of English proficiency. So you don't need to have the TOEFL or TOEIC, maybe that would be advantageous. But if you're from the Philippines, you just need to submit that uh, our curriculum is being taught in English and that would be enough. And then you will need to submit your recommendation letter and your passport copy for identification. And then on January, there would be preliminary sc screening based on your documents. And then when you are you get shortlisted, then you will uh, have question and answer exams and interview with the professors in your department. And then you'll get the final result on the next month. And then they will be the one to forward your application to next. Most, if not all, uh, of course, pass like they get the max scholarship once they get uh, recommended by the university. So you'll know the results by July, and then you'll start processing your documents maybe August, and then you'll be here on the end of September, and then start your classes on October. So, uh, so I just want to share what are the advantages of studying here in Japan, specifically in Osaka University. So first for me, you will have personal growth. You will really develop your character because you are away from home, away from your comfort zone. You get to uh, interconnect with, with people from different walks in life and then different background, different culture. That is, uh, at the same time, you're dealing with your research problems or personal problems, so you will really grow as a person. And then next is uh, research ideas is very much like, how to say this? they encourage you to think uh, outside the box and it is possible to accomplish whatever you think. So maybe in, back in the Philippines, there would be limitations because of the facilities or the funds, but here you can think and make it happen. 
And then another thing is the mentorship. So here in Japan, the senior kohai or the senior junior mentorship is really strong, wherein you get to be trained by uh, your mentors, either your professors or your seniors. You will be trained, and then once you learn the things you do in the lab, you'll be the one training your juniors. So, and the best way to learn is by teaching it. So uh, you get to be a follower and a leader and you develop skills through that. And lastly, the research facilities here are really advanced. And I want to show more of this. So in our department, these are the different laboratories. So I used to belong in the bioenvironmental systems engineering. And yes, these are just some of the high-end equipment that you can find in the different laboratories in our department. So there are fluorescence microscope or bioluminescent microscope. We have our own DNA sequencers. You can get your DNA sequence within the day, or maybe the latest would be the next day if there are many people using it. There are a lot of mass spectrometers for a different purpose. And then this is for metabolic or metabolome profiling. This is a bioreactor and just sample of a microplaterator. So whatever you need here, you really just have to tell your professor for what purpose you'll use it. And then maybe if they really think it's important, they can acquire it for you. And then, so this is what I used to do in our lab. So as I mentioned, I used the Daphnia magna the zooplankton as our model organism. So what we usually do is we dissect it to get its eggs. And then this, uh, these are the eggs of the Daphnia magna. We would inject either the plasmid DNA or RNAs or the uh, proteins like the CRISPR-Cas9 to make mutant Daphnias or uh, to change their expressions. So this is an ex another example of a mutant Daphnia wherein we use a reporter green fluorescent proteins in the nucleus so we can observe its development from the egg to the embryo. That's not nothing. And uh, this one, I use the GFP and also the m cherry a signal of this specific gene to see the changes. So I use silencing RNA and then observe the changes in the Daphnia through the fluorescent signals. And this is also another, uh, this is what I did for my PhD studies. I studied about this gene, this SHEP, and also a long non-coding RNA. And then in our lab, they call our team as the gender benders because we can regulate the sex of the Daphnia. We can make it either more feminine or more masculine. So aside from that, I just want to share this. So some people before coming here in Japan, you have this connotation that people work uh, here are very workaholic or sometimes it could be toxic or it could be, you might get scared because of those connotations. But actually, people here work hard, but at the same time, we play hard. So this is uh, the lab that I used to belong. It is, they have been my family for five years, and it was really fun being with them. We go to trips. So there are, we have two lab trips, official lab trips. We go during summer and during winter because this is my professor's uh, favorite hobby, skiing. So we go skateboarding or skiing every winter. And then aside from the official love trips, we also go uh, everywhere around Japan during weekends or holidays. We go barbecue or hiking or uh, yeah, visiting different places during different seasons. And then we also have, we do several parties for whatever occasions during Halloween or uh, spring picnics or summer festivals or for whatever purpose we can find. And there are also uh, sports festivals in Osaka University, uh, wherein you get to compete with different laboratories from different departments. It's like intramurals back in the Philippines. And yeah, so I uh, just want to share. So my five years here in Osaka University was really challenging, but at the same time, it was fun and very fulfilling. And so what's next after? I want, just want to share what could be your perspective after you finish your master's or your PhD. So most of the graduates would pursue, the most popular choice would to stay in the academe. This is for people who are really, just really very passionate about their research and want to do more. So some would do uh, would continue their postdoctoral studies, be a researcher, 
or join the faculty here in Japan or maybe go back to the Philippines or another country. And then you can also join the industry. You can apply for work and join research facilities or there are also several companies where you can join food, cosmetics, pharmaceutical, electrical companies wherein you can apply as apply for research and development or quality control or as engineers. But at the same time, it's never too late to explore other fields. So even if you finish already your PhD, you can you can try whatever you're passionate about. As so for me, I've always wanted to be one of my childhood dreams to be a lawyer, but then I got into research and I fell in love with it. So I wasn't able to pursue that. And now so I applied to this company. So I am now working as Shisako Yamamoto. So this is a patent and law office here in Japan. And then, so they are very, uh, they are world renowned. They are one of the most, uh, the world leading firm here in Japan. They've been involved in different uh, advancements in science and technology. And they've also patented uh, for the researcher, researchers of several Nobel Prize winners in chemistry or medicine. And now I am privileged to work with them as a biotechnology specialist. So I, so I feel like this time I get to bridge what I'm hoping to experience and also uh, use my learnings from PhD and application in this job. And yeah, so that's it. Just, it's just the last message, like uh, don't be afraid, just try it. If you really want it, you can make it happen and you never know where what you can reach or what you can achieve if you try things so i hope to see you here everyone and if you have questions please shoot it and we will try to answer it later thank you okay okay thank you very much uh, miss perez for that very inspiring talk now um the last presenter would be me. Uh, so let me share to you my slides. Can everybody see my slide? Can some people thumbs up if they can see my slide? Okay, so you can hear me clearly. So, Marhai Nahapon, I'm JL. I am from the Bicol region. So originally from the Bicol region, from Naga City. And as I've mentioned, I am an alumnus of Osaka University and De La Salle University. And um, just a few months ago, I also graduated from both universities, uh, from Osaka University, gaining PhD in engineering and in De La Salle University with PhD in physics. This is under the double degree program that uh, Dino Sensei and some other presenters mentioned that it is possible to obtain uh, two degrees un under the double degree program. And I am through uh, De La Salle University and Osaka University partnership. Currently, I am a postdoctoral researcher also in Osaka University in the Institute of Laser Engineering. So this is just a picture from their website where, the, uh, where you can see the facilities of the Institute of Laser Engineering. And if I'm not mistaken, it houses one of the largest lasers in the world. And um, I'm part of this institute as a theoretical computational physicist. So I, I model, I model um, crystals that are used for light emitting diodes or other optical materials. So I started as a short-term student in Kasai Laboratory. So this is me on the left side. And most of the people here are already graduates. Um, I am under the short-term program of QEDC, similar with Nina. Or exactly the same as Nina, I started as a short-term program, uh, short-term program student, one year of um, studying in Osaka University. So I am in my master's uh, program in De La Salle University when I joined Kasai Laboratory as a short-term student. So I grabbed the opportunity 
to use that one year to do my research for my master's thesis. And um, I've met several, a lot of people. And in Kasai Laboratory, a lot of, there are a lot of international students. There are people from Indonesia, people from Thailand, of course, Japan, and uh, from Turkey, and also from the Philippines. There are also people from the Philippines. So this laboratory is, um, has really a lot of international students. That's why it uh, is easier for foreigners to adapt to the environment. And in that one-year short-term program, you can do your research as well as experience Japan. So um, as you all know, Osaka University is in Kansai Prefecture. And these are just uh, some of the beautiful places that you can visit. As mentioned a while ago, the Universal Studios of Japan is here. And the new, uh, what do you call this? The, their, their new attraction, Nintendo World Mario, which I also want to experience, but maybe in the future. <laughs> so, and Har Harry Potter, to those who are fans of Naruto, uh, this is also um, one of the longest uh, suspension bridge. And also other castles, which are very beautiful in springtime and in autumn. So um, in my presentation, I will mostly focus on um, the Filipino community. So here in Osaka University, there are um, a lot of, uh, not really a lot, but maybe a good enough number of Filipino students. Uh, this is Filso. So our organization is called Filso, and it is a recognized organization here in the university. Uh, this is an organization of Filipino students and not just students, other um, alum, alumnus, other alumni also join us because uh, some of the alumni students are all also working in Osaka University as assistant professor or as postdoctoral researcher. And these are just some of our activities. We had um, Hana, Hana, Han, Hanami. <laughs> uh, that proves that you don't need to have good Japanese skill to enter the graduate program. So you can learn during your studies here. <laughs> so this is uh, um, Hanami. So we had lunch under the Sakura tree. And also we had uh, sports fest. That was when our organization is still active, like two years ago. So maybe, hopefully, the new students would, um, would be encouraged to continue Filso as it was fun those times. So these are times that we can enjoy the Filipino community. We can also eat Filipino food and play Filipino games. And of course, aside from having fun, we also have um, conferences. Uh, this is one conference wherein Filipino students uh, present their research. So I call it these poster presentations as Chikahan with visual aids. So you can see here um, Filipino students and professors who are sharing their research researches and um, just discussing about uh, possible things that can be improved in their research and what are the things that um, other professors, Filipino professors and even Japanese professors can share to improve their research. So we also do that here in Osaka University. And um, one of the advantages of doing such is the connections that we can make. So we can build networks. So most of the pictures that you can see here these uh, when when I entered as a short term student, these are these people were just um, PhD students or master students at that time. But uh, now they are um, professors, assistant professors, or um, experts in their field in different parts of uh, the world, the Philippines, Japan, and in Europe. I think so. So that's uh, one of the advantages. And just to give you an idea on what we are, uh, what Filipino community we have here, let me share to you a video of um, Filso or one of the activities of Filso.
I'm sure you saw we have a tradition. You say feel so. You say feel so. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope you were encouraged to um, enroll in the graduate program. As you can see, there are a lot of um, Filipinos here that can support or help you in adjusting um, life here in Osaka University. So I think uh, it's time now for question and answer. Uh, Dinya Sensei? Okay, yes, thank you very much. Thank you very much to all. So I will, so please, uh, if you have any questions, please uh, put them in the chat. So I will be reading the questions that have so far been uh, uh, registered in the chat. So first is uh, from Francis Jason Ui. Can I ask what are the requirements? Oh, yes. Uh, what are the requirements needed to be met in order to be a scholar? So I think this was already addressed by uh, all of our alum, uh, my other colleagues. So if you in, have any other additional information to do. Uh, so usually it's uh, written in the application form depending on the programs that you have. Other than that, uh, if you have any my colleagues do you have uh, anything to add so to for the scholarships most of the students here uh, there are only uh, there there are two types some applied in the emb through the embassy so they they went uh, physically to the embassy and applied for the scholarship and i think i've read somebody asking what is the limit or how many filipinos are are accepted maybe in the program or in the scholarship uh, we actually don't know. So it's, it depends on the embassy. Uh, I think during um, when, I think during some other times, like 20, 20 people, I, I'm not sure. So uh, just apply. 
Uh, I actually know some Filipino students here. I actually know a friend who went here, I think, without a scholarship. So he entered uh, the graduate program. And then the professor, um, the prof professor found um, some fundings for his studies. So he was able to continue his studies, maybe for master's. And then while studying for master's, he looked for a scholarship for PhD in Osaka University. Actually, uh, I think most of, or all of the students that are presenting here will agree that if you check the email, when you are a student here, when you check your, your university email, you will see a lot of private uh, fundings from different Japanese, um, Japanese institutions. And another thing is, um, I think uh, you can also apply, if you don't have a scholarship, you can also apply for um, exemption, tuition fee exemption. And from most friends that I know who applied for exemption, they, they, they are always granted exemption. Maybe the least would be 50%. And then uh, some of them uh, got 100% exemption. Yeah, so I think there are a lot of scholarships. You can apply for scholarship before coming here. Or if you are brave enough, then you can come here and then enter the program and look for scholarships here. Or do some uh, activities like a, uh, like a part-time job to sustain your living expenses here. As I've said, tuition fee, you can apply for tuition fee exemption. Yes, so thank you. So uh, scholar finding scholarship is actually easier now than before. So it's just having the will and doing good research, doing good study. So if there are going to the next question uh, from Nikki Raimundo, uh, is there a short term program in public health? So I just already put uh, the link to the information for public health and medi medical, um, medical college. Uh, so you can look up there and maybe also look for some information from the researchers there. Okay, uh, going next. Uh, of course, uh, yes, if you also look at the, at the chat, I also put a link to a database of researchers. So you can also look that up. Just put in the keywords that you want and then maybe those who are doing the same research, you will find them there. And also Nina put up the link for the scholarship from MEX and also for the Osaka University Graduate School of Engineering website and uh, science, engineering science. Another question to Nina from Enrique. Uh, first, do you need to uh, already have a research topic before applying? Nina. Uh, yes, actually, I commented na din uh, po yung sagot. Uh, uh, okay. you, should I read it or? Uh, anyway, just, uh, uh, yes, please. Okay, so first question, do you need to have a research topic before applying? Uh, yes, actually, in your application form, you need to specify uh, what your research plan is, which you can also communicate with your aspired, aspired supervisor first. Although, the research plan may or may not change as you go through the program. Uh, the next question, do you choose your graduate research advisor or are they recommended based on your research topic? Yes, it will actually be good if you choose your research advisor first. So yes, you, you do. I think it will really help with your application if you choose first. Uh, you can choose your advisor based on the research focus if it aligns with your desired research topic. Then once you have established a connection with the supervisor, you can discuss about your planned research topics. So uh, if it is feasible. Uh, but I think if you don't choose your advisor, I have a friend in which like the program chose for him once he got accepted. So there's also that. But I think it's really better to choose your advisor first. And then is there a limit on how long you should take, uh, on how long should it take for you to complete your research? Um, I have an answer here, but I think like, uh, other people are more credible to answer this than me. Uh, be 
So I think there's an option to apply for exceeding the plan or recommended number of years. But if you're under a scholarship, chances are your scholarship will only cover you for the pre-plan duration. Um, is there, uh, I'll just answer the next question first and maybe I can uh, open the question to others as well. Then does your research need to be published in a journal to complete your master's degree? Uh, I think it depends on the program. For my master's program, no, we didn't have to publish. But for PhD, uh, we are required a certain number of papers. Well, in my program, it's three. Um, in other programs, it's none to two. So it really varies on the program. Uh, about the limit on how long you should take for to complete your graduate research, how maybe uh, Dino Sensei or Cecil or Crystal who have graduated. Uh, so basically, if I will be, basically you're limited by the funding that you have. So if you can, if you are able to support yourself, it's as long as it takes. But usually it's just limited by how uh, your scholarship or, and uh, so yes, but officially they will say 10 years, 10 years, but you can then, uh, just submit some paper to say, oh, you need some more to finish this. So basically, it only depends on how you will be able to support yourself financially. Only that. Other than that, no limit, I think. Okay, so moving on to the next. Again, to Nina, from your presentation, I see that your track is mostly focused on research. And it was mentioned that Osaka University also specializes in research. Do you know if there are many opportunities for international students who are inclined on going into the industry practice, like for example, in the field of agri agriculture or so. And how also you may have mentioned about community around your campus. So I'd like to ask how the housing institution is like. Thank you. Uh, so Nina first. Okay, um, for industry, uh, I'm not really sure because it depends as well in like what position you want in the industry and uh, what field the industry you're aiming for. So um, I think a lot of students who graduated like masters or PhD still go into to industry. Like, especially if you're, if you're aiming for a research position in the industry, some after their PhD, they apply to that uh, uh, company and yeah. There's also masters, yeah, you can also apply to a position in the industry. Um, about agriculture though, I'm not sure if Osaka University has a, a, a program on agriculture. Um, maybe I can also ask for help on this question from other people. And having a community in or around your campus. So I'd like to ask how about the housing situation. So usually like once you come here, you're assigned to like a dorm. But after that, uh, since like uh, you, after that, you need to move out and then you can rent an apartment. So I live uh, in a one person apartment and it's actually nice. It's, it's yeah, you need to, search for an apartment, that's, that's all. Okay, thank you. So one example of, uh, I think Christelle is a good example, going to the industry from uh, 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 after having her PhD, correct? Yes, awesome. so it's possible. It's not necessary to, just because you're doing research doesn't mean that you cannot find a job in the industry. It's actually a plus in some sense that you are Especially, I think in the industry, if you have a PhD degree, it's easier to negotiate something. Uh, am I correct? Ah, yes, Sensei. Also, in Japan, Osaka University is a well-known university as one of the top universities. So it's like advantageous for people who graduated from Osaka University. And actually, the firm that I joined, uh, the owner is also a graduate of Osaka University. And there are many patent lawyers or technical specialists there who are also Osaka University graduates. So it's really advantageous. Even if you studied a uh, master's or PhD, it would help you apply in university in, in industries, not that not the other way that it would you will only you only have the choice of going to the academy. So 
Yes, thank you very much. And also for the question about the field of agriculture, if you are, I think even if, oh, okay, first, the first question is, in Osaka University, there is no field agriculture. I think in Japan, it's only available in Hokkaido University. But regardless, uh, I think if you are thinking about employment, please remember, it's what you bring as added value, not what they already know. So if you're doing agriculture, maybe I will hire somebody who not only knows agriculture, but knows more and can bring something new to the field, let's say. So it doesn't, uh, do not limit yourself to say, oh, because I need, I'm interested in agriculture, I should do this and then go straight. No, I think there are more opportunities for you. So please. But if you're really interested in agriculture, I think it's only Hokkaido University that's, that offers this at the moment. And maybe Saga, Saga University, I think. Anyway, going to the next, Zeus. To any end comments on how to apply Osaka University to Osaka graduate programs for students outside partner university? I already answered this. So it doesn't limit, it's not limited to partner universities, only if you are doing exchange programs, because the exchange program means you are will be a student of your host university and at the same time of your home university. Other than that, it's not necessary to be a part uh, student of a partner university, which I answered, I think, yes. Uh -huh. uh, with regard to your question, question, okay. I think getting into contact with potential supervisor is more, oh, so there's a the follow up, I see. But I think getting into contact with the potential supervisor is more difficult for non-partner school. If I may follow up, how may I go about dealing with this? So as an answer, I think uh, just contact, just contact the, just contact. It doesn't matter who, it, it's not who you know, but what you, how passionate you are. So we, 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 uh, with what you can, uh, what you want to do. So just contact the, the professor or whoever it is that you want. So not necessary to be a partner in university. It, yes, it may be an advantage, but not necessarily. Mm -hmm. So how many students are usually accepted? Also, also ask and answer. There's no cap actually, and we don't know, but it depends on the programs also. So you have to look it up. I see, Camille, there is no, okay. Okay, 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 okay. Is there an age limit for applying to the program? In principle, no. Uh, in principle, no. Uh, but you have to think sometimes uh, some of the programs, for example, if, especially if they offer scholarships, sometimes they put the cup. But in principle, there's no age limit to all the programs. Ah, and there is another, to any. Would having stellar grades affect getting accepted? The pandemic has made it hard to achieve such. So I wonder if it affects if my grades aren't as amazing as others. So I think this is also answered already by any, I think so. Having a stellar grade doesn't necessarily uh, guarantee that you would be a good researcher. So that is, from experience. And I think all the professors know that. Of course, yes, if you have a good grade, maybe there is a possibility, but it doesn't guarantee. So again, like I said, so if you are passionate enough, so please do not hesitate and apply. That is my comment. I think nobody disagrees. Okay, look at, okay, everybody agrees. Next. Is there a program applicable if you wanna pursue dentistry? Yes, there is a College of Dentistry and I put up the link already. So if you are interested, Maria uh, from Sarena. Good afternoon to anyone. Most speakers have, most speakers have seen less educational resume, meaning they immediately took up master short-term programs after college for people who have not been in the academy in the while. In a while, do we still have a chance of getting into a scholarship? I asked. As I've been working for years, government employee, and I have not been in the country since I graduated from college. Thank you. Okay, if I can answer, or I think, or, or also, if you look at Nina, Alas, and 
Crystal, they work before entering yep. the program. Oh, so alas, please. Yep, I think I can address some of the questions, including Zeus, yung um sa non-partnered university, and then yung sa government employee. Because lahat po yan ay aking experiences, so I think I'm qualified to answer some of it. So, like many of you, um, okay, ang undergraduate degree ko po ay D8 Linguistics, Pidiliman, and then for four years I work um in the government non-government organizations contractual siya. And the only possible solution for me to apply for a MEC scholarship is through the embassy recommendation. And like what Binyo Sensei said, palakasan ko ng loob yan. And noong una natatakot ako kasi say, kung magre-reply ba sila sa akin? And actually, nagre-reply po sila. Hindi po ako dumaan sa partner universities. Nag-research po ako about first research interest ng supervisor and how does it fit into my research interest and then um, second is kung ano yung uh, plan ko doon sa research proposal. So, I think pagdating sa stellar grades, um, it can be a factor, pero meron din po akong tres nung college ako. So, hindi rin ako ganun ka-stellar student. Uh, pero, I think yung dedication and ang main basis po talaga for getting a scholarship is how you present your research proposal and kung gaano ka serious doon. So, yun po yung comment and also, um, I think uh, in terms of the academe, na may uh, government employee, I think it's really an edge for you because yung experiences mo ay ano na siya, kumbaga application siya ng theory and practice. So you can use it actually as a strength in applying for um, your uh, MEC scholarship. So any questions? Yes. I hope hopefully na address ko siya. Uh, si Nina umaalma dun sa tres. May gusto siya sabihin. May singko po ako at kakas nandito pa rin po ako. Sa... <laughs> <laughs> Depends sa... Wait, sa ibang university ba tayo yung grading system? Yung singko yung bagsak. So. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. So, it's possible. And uh, so... Uh, yes, because you will be judged not by what you did, but what is your potential. Mm -hmm. So please remember that. Okay. And uh, next question. Oh, when is the next application then line in? Is there a program on food science or biochem? Thank you. I think this was already answered somehow. Okay. And uh, so please uh, look up other if there are any additional uh, information that you would like to know. But I think this was already presented. Thank you. So, okay, going, going, going. Uh, oh, for PhD studies, especially in physics, is there, is it more of a US type of PhD where there will be classes first before doing research or is it more of a European type of PG where we have to do research right away? Okay, I can answer this. It's more of both. There are, depending on your program, for example, for physics, ah, yes, you said physics. Immediately you have to do research, but you have to attend seminars. Only that, I hope it does. I think it's the same for all. I don't know for, uh, I think the question is specifically for physics. Okay, please, Jesse. I think uh, most of them are asking because in, in the Philippines, uh, PhD, a PhD in physics degree would likely require a lot of units, like around 40 or 30 plus units of subjects. So as since I am under the double degree program, so I under I, I, I had my PhD in the Philippines, which is a lot of... Um, a lot of subjects before you can enter the research uh, research uh, what, uh, before you enter research while in japan it's different so in japan when i started uh, under dino sensei supervision we i started right away with research and i think the subject is just six units required is six units in the philippines my requirement is around 30 plus units so in japan you start right away with research so the focus is more on research. Okay, moving on. Another follow-up from Sarina. 
uh, are the odds of us getting accepted smaller if we have not been in the academy for a while? Also, are we required to take a postgraduate course that is related to our BABS? Thank you. Uh, as an answer, not necessary and not, no, no effect. Uh, I think, hello, if you have accepted in the scholarship, is there a plain fee or sponsored and do they have art courses? It depends on the, for the scholarship. It depends on the nature of the scholarship. Some they provide airplane fee. Some they do not. Art courses. Okay, I don't know. Alas, do you know? Your mic, alas, is off. You are muted, alas. Yeah, um, actually, I'm not sure with Osaka University Meron po yung art courses. Sorry. Uh, yes, I think it, there are fine arts or something I'm not in, I don't know. But for example, if it's architecture and so on, there is. Mm -hmm. But purely arts, I'm not sure. Ah, but you can look up. I said there is a database and then put in the keyword arts. Let's see who are the professors that could come out. Uh, okay, from Sus again, can non-partnered universities apply for MEC scholarship as an answer? It's yes. Uh, is a teacher education graduate eligible to apply for pure science uh, or master PhD in Osaka University as an answer? Yes. As stated in the IPC application guidelines, there will be an entrance exam for applying to fee physics PhD program. Is the exam a uh, standard P physics exam like the PhD, uh, physics GRE, or is it a specific exam depending on the group that I'm replying to? It's standard physics GRE. So if it's physics, it will be classical mechanics, quantum mechanics, statistical mechanics, and electromagnetism, something like that, standard. Uh, because it's PhD program. Okay. Ah. Oh, I see. Uh, oh, oh. And there will be an interview. So that interview part is very important. Uh, like somebody uh, mentioned already. So do good in your interview. Please show them the passion. Oh, from Carissa. Good afternoon. Will there be a recording of this summary? Uh, yes, you can Google up. I think it will be up, uh, uploaded in YouTube later. So you can take a look again. Uh -huh. From Jill. Uh, good for us having our undergraduate degree here in the Philippines, who would like to apply for exchange uh, student program? Are we also qualified for the scholarship programs? Also, are there microbiology programs available for the exchange programs? Thank you. So answer as an answer, it's an exchange program. You should be up uh, with a partner university. Then you can avail of the scholarship. If not, there is also a chance, for example, the Frontier Lab Zone, but you cannot avail of the scholarship if you are not from a partner university, but because some of them require that. Uh, and Frias Seira, uh, do you have also courses if you want to pursue medicine? Yes. So like I uh, just Google, uh, earlier I put up the, the website for the uh, College of Medicine. So please look up the courses that they offer. For Jonah Illustre, follow up long course. So, say if I have experience of research ever since, ever since in high school, I have more advantage than having good grades. If I have experience of research ever since, yes, of course, it's research. If you can do research, so yes, advantage, but. Just like saying, oh, I have experience in research doesn't work. You have to show. So it finally, it's up to how you will be able to appeal. Let's say I'm just imagining that, that this is just during the interview stage, or you have something to show that you really achieved something during your uh, when you did the research in high school. Uh, again, do the school offer pre-medical courses? This, I don't know. Uh, oh, okay. So when you say pre-medical courses, so it doesn't mean uh, biology or if you think of, uh, there are courses like that. So you can start with 
uh, let's say biology or biotechnology or let's say pharmacy or let's say uh, human sciences start there and then go to your doctor as a PhD. So it depends on how, how you program your uh, uh, course, but yes, it's also uh, officially no, but it depends on you, how you will program your course. Next from Bernard. Hello, is it possible to have a rundown again on applying for graduate next true university recommendation? Thank you. Oh, uh, who presented this? Uh, yes, please. I did, but um, I think if you want to see like kung may max scholarship by yung program, you need to go to the website of the program itself. I shared some links on like, because I, be, I belong to the Graduate School of Engineering. So I shared links on the Graduate School of Engineering and Graduate School of Engineering Science um, MEX program. So I can share them again here. Okay, thank you very much. So I was told to finish this by 45. Anyway, the, I just see what are the expected career points for the national. Please wrap up. Thank you. Can we have any? Well, okay. Are you facing question? So just ah, anyway, everybody, it's us and answered finally. Most of the questions that are remaining were answered also through uh through chat. Okay, so I think if there are we will check again later if some of the questions were not answered, uh, then we will contact you again. But I think all of the questions are asked and answered. So again, thank you very much for your time. And uh, I would also like to thank all my colleagues in Osaka University for your time and dedication, for volunteering your time. I hope that this has been an informative session for all the participants. Again, thank you very much. See you sometime somewhere. Please take care and stay safe. Mabuhay. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.